BBC News, I'm John Shea. Myanmar's ambassador to the UK says his embassy in London has been taken over by the Burmese military and he's been locked out. Chaws R. Min described it as a kind of coup in the middle of London. Paul Adams was outside the embassy in Mayfair. Chaws R. Min says he's tried a couple of times to get in, watched by the police and a small group of pro-democracy activists, but so far without success. The ambassador has been critical of the military's actions in Myanmar. He's called for restraint and for the release of the country's elected de facto leader, Aung San Suu Kyi. He's not been nearly as outspoken as his counterpart at the United Nations, who back in February called on the international community to defeat the coup. The military did say he was being recalled a month ago after the ambassador made what they said was an unauthorised statement. But it's only now that he finds himself without an embassy. The U.S. has announced that it will provide the Palestinians with more than $230 million in aid. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, said it includes support for the U.N. agency known as UNRWA. Barbara Platasha reports. This is a clear break with the policy of the Trump administration, which pursued pro-Israel positions and cut all aid to the Palestinians. Mr. Blinken announced a resumption of funds for economic and development assistance, for peace building and for UNRWA. That's welcome news to the UN agency, which struggled to meet the needs of Palestinian refugees without U.S. contributions. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict is not a priority for the Biden administration. It's appointed no special envoy and doesn't plan to launch a peace initiative. But it has decisively re-engaged with the Palestinians, diplomatically and now with financial support. European Union countries have failed to agree a joint approach on who should receive the AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccine, following new advice from the EU's drugs regulator. Jean McKenzie reports from Brussels. The European Medicines Agency concluded that although blood clots were a potential side effect of the AstraZeneca vaccine, they were very, very rare and the vaccine should be given to all age groups. But it's up to individual countries how they use their vaccines, with Belgium and Spain announcing they will no longer give AstraZeneca to people aged under 55 and 60. Several countries, including France and Germany, had already stopped administering the vaccine to younger people because of concerns. A Turkish court has sentenced 32 former soldiers to life imprisonment for their part in the failed coup of 2016, in the culmination of a trial centred on the presidential guard. Prominent among them were two officers who led the storming of the state television station TRT and forced the presenter to read out their manifesto. This is the latest world news from the BBC. The British government says it will provide targeted help to the hundreds of thousands of Hong Kong citizens who are expected to move to the UK using a special visa. A third of a million Hong Kong citizens are expected to settle in Britain over the next five years. The Chinese government has introduced a security law in Hong Kong which restricts long-standing democratic freedoms. British Cabinet Minister Robert Jenrick said the new arrivals will be offered full support as needed. We think that most of those who choose to come to the UK will in fact be people who will contribute a great deal to the United Kingdom, will uh, be professionals or will set up businesses or will want to, to make a real success of their time here. But if they struggle, then we're here to support them and that means local councils being there to provide them with housing, with the benefit system standing behind them and with all the support that the state can offer to make sure that no one gets into difficult times. Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said he's deeply concerned by violence in Northern Ireland, which has been going on for the past few nights. In the latest incident, police came under attack and a bus was hijacked and set alight in the main city, Belfast. The violence began over local political issues and concerns about the impact on Northern Ireland of Brexit. The British government has again suspended funding for the aid agency Oxfam after fresh allegations of misconduct involving staff working in Central Africa. Two members of staff were suspended last week following allegations of bullying and sexual exploitation in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Oxfam says it launched an independent investigation into the claims in November. Police in California say the golfer Tiger Woods was driving at nearly double the speed limit before a crash that left him seriously injured. The Los Angeles County Sheriff said Woods' car had been travelling at more than 130 kilometres an hour when it careered off the road in February. And that's the latest BBC World News.